sure glad they stuck right to their uh, <laughs> thing. <laughs> High School Pep Band and our national anthem as the preview of tonight's contest was completely wrong on the timesheet countdown that we were handed, but that's okay. We adjust as we are here bringing you high school basketball. It's the second game of the sectional, the semifinal game. Last night, it was a 12-point victory for the Silver Streaks over Sycamore as the teams now, I, oh, I see they just let the clock run, so. Yep. Oh, well, well, there. We'll, 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 we'll get it all straight. <laughs> oh. the, the Maroons and the Cavaliers now getting ready for the introduction of tonight's starting lineups. We'll have those when we come back after this timeout on Championship Basketball 1997. the starting lineups, a nice crowd here. This gymnasium seats about 2,800. We probably have about 2,400. A big crowd, especially compared to last night, where only about 1,100 fans got into the action. Looks like Dorian Earl's gonna get a start. Yep. The Maroons will be the visiting team. They'll be dressed in their maroon uniforms, white trim and sleeves. The Cavaliers in white uniforms with red and green trim. For the Cavaliers, they come in with a 24 and two record. They will have in the middle, six foot nine inch senior, Kevin Klobuchar, averaging 12 points on the year. He'll be joined in the front court by Brandon Toronto, 6'8", junior, averaging 12 points, and 6'3", junior, Jake Sherman, with an 11.5 point average. The backcourt will consist of 5'9", senior, Jason Leone, averaging 2.5 points, and 6'1", senior, hot shooting, Adam Riva, who averages 21.5 points on the year. For the Maroons, they will start in the front court Six foot five inch senior Dorian Earl. He'll be joined by six foot five inch junior Ian Hanneman, averaging 13.9. In the backcourt, it'll be six six senior Nick DeVilder, averaging 13.8. Six two 
junior, Travis Wilson, averaging 15.6. And 6'3 junior, Kenny Springer, averaging 2.8. We did not get Dorian's average. That's not a slight. We just did not have it. I suspect he's probably averaging about four points on the year. I think that'd be a pretty Com good guess. Coming in off the bench, he uh -huh. usually bench. But tonight, with the big lineup, Frank Dexter makes the first move and puts Steve Cottrell on the bench, the normal starter, and comes with Dorian Earl. As Jim Sanders, who's joining me tonight, said, Dorian Earl has come on strong in the last five games for these Maroons as we're ready for high school basketball. Tip goes up, and Kenny Sprager has it. The DeBuilder in the front court, left wing. He holds it up. Underneath it goes to Hanneman, back to DeBuilder. It looks like the Cavaliers will play man-to-man. -man. DeBuilder on the left wing, now the left corner. Bounce pass underneath to Earl, back out to Hanneman. His jump shot up, no good. Battle for the rebound, and pulled down by Jake Sherman. Sherman with the first rebound of the ball game, and quickly into the front court. It's Adam Rivas shot up and good. Baseline left side, 12 feet. And we know why he averages 21 and a half points. What a quick release on the jump shot. Ball comes into the front court as Wilson in the middle of the court. Handles the press, now throws it away. Riva backs it away and gets it. The first turnover of the game, Riva stops behind the curve. Shot up back iron, no good. Battle for the rebound, Hanneman has it. Gets away with a little hop step. And the Maroons have it in the hands of Jack DeBuilder who walks it down the floor. His team trails by two. DeBuilder comes on the right wing, goes to the middle of the floor, comes to Hanneman. Hanneman to Springer, underneath it goes to Wilson, and Wilson's fouled underneath, quick foul. Jake Sherman pushing as Wilson had the baseline left side. He would have had the layup without the foul. He made a great move on the baseline. First foul of the ball game whistled against Sherman and the Cavaliers. It'll be DeBuilder with the inbound. Bounce pass, oh, great inbound play, and they caught the Cavs sleeping. And in with the easy layup is Travis Wilson. Ball into the baseline, now knocked away by Earl. He throws it away as Wilson can't handle it, and the Cavs have it. Into the corner, it goes to Reva. Baseline right move, nice move, and he's fouled as he got around Dorian Earl, who lost his concentration after making the bad pass as the Maroons have a switch. I don't know, I missed it, but Wilson wears 34, not 40. He's worn three different jerseys this year, so we're not quite sure why that happens like that. With the foul call, it was Earl, shot up and rims out. The exact same shot missed last night by Pat Voss, this time by another great shooter, Adam Reba. On the first to two, he'll have one more. Earl with the foul, and this one rims off, and there's Hanneman for the rebound. Gives it ahead to DeBuilder, and Springer in the front court. Lays it off to, to Hanneman right side, now DeBuilder between the circles. He comes against Reva, a big mismatch. DeBuilder runs the offense to Wilson, now Hanneman. Hanneman moved to the baseline to Springer, his three ball up and good! Kenny Springer from behind the curve, and it's a five to two Maroon lead. Ball into the middle and a quick foul by Springer as he tried to dig the ball away from Brandon Torando. And Springer picks up his first foul, the second whistle against the Maroons. And right now the Cavaliers look to push the ball. They're pressing all over the court. They're doing a nice job. Doing a nice job. But, you know, Moline's getting some decent shots, so we'll have to see here. In the front court, it's Sherman right side. He steps to the curve. His shot no good. Battle for the rebound. And Springer out duels Adam Reba and gets the ball over to DeVilder, who comes between his legs across the timeline right side. Reva right there, DeVilder breaks him down, shot up and good, a running one-hander. Normally not a good shot, but DeVilder that time got his shoulders square under control and put it in from 60. Did a beautiful job. Penetration is the key against this defense. Maroons press, 1-2-2, two, two. Reva has it. Nice pass off the knee of Klobuchar, but they say Springer hit it out of bounds. And now the back official is gonna talk with the underneath official, and they change the call. Good work by the officiating crew, as clearly the back official had the better angle. The underneath official screened out, made the quick call, but now they got it right. Earl gets the pressure to DeVilder, and DeVilder gets away to Hanneman across the timeline left side. Crosses it to Earl, and the Maroons hold it up. They lead seven to two. 
Canavan bounces underneath the Wilson. He spins, gets everybody up in the air, shot up, good little count and a foul. Travis Wilson just too strong on the baseline. That's the second time he's got the ball down there. And picking up the foul is Kevin Klobuchar at 6'9". And he's just too strong there. Well, yeah. and they had three they had three men on him, had him pinned behind the bank board, and Travis is still able to make that patented move that we see so often in our area. 9-2. Travis at the line to extend the lead to eight, and he does. The Maroons off red hot as they lead 10 to two, 5.14 to go in the first quarter. Riva in the backcourt and quickly, the you know, Sal Peru team needs a timeout. With the score, the Moline Maroons 10. And LaSalle Peru Cavaliers, too, will take this break and be right back to Dixon on WKBF 1270 in Rock Island. you got to change that one, too. Yeah. <laughs> These stats are going to be... <laughs> You're doing I, just fine. I don't know how he does all that stuff. That's, that's, that's almost impossible. Could it be? <laughs> He's smarter than me. <laughs> I get watching the game, and I'm going, okay, there was a shot, and somebody else got the rebound. I started where I'm doing pretty good. I'm just listening to you. <laughs> if, I, if I listen to you, you're telling me what's happening. I don't have to look at it. Well, as we said last night, we'll get a few of these commercials changed over. They caught us short staff this week as we are trying to get our broadcasts on, but our thanks to all of our fine sponsors for bringing high school basketball to the team that we will follow in the Quad City area all the way through. Hopefully it's the Moline Maroons as the Cavaliers attack. Jason Leone gets it over to Riva right side back to Leone. Leone left side against the 1-2-2. Two, two. This aggressive zone defense waits for the team to come to him and then tries to cut it off. Riva steps inside the curve. Jump shot up, no good. And Springer picks off another rebound. Quickly to DeVilder and they want DeVilder to run the show as you said Jim. He is the glue that's keeping this team together, and he's made great decisions early in this basketball yeah, he game. he really has. It's, uh, and, and, and it's fun to watch him play. Moline has really come a long way. Travis Wilson's jump shot soft off the iron. He was right on the line. It would have been two, but the Cavaliers pulled on the rebound as Leone has it to Toronto. Toronto cut off. Now to Leone. He swings the ball to the left wing. He looks. Can't find anybody. Now they get it to Riva, and now we're going to have a foul underneath as it was Klobuchar and Dorian Earl underneath jockeying for position and Dorian Earl picks up his second personal foul, the third whistled and quickly into the ball game for Frank Stechter comes 6'4 senior Steve Cottrell. So Cottrell will come off the bench as Earl picks up two fouls to Riva. Riva about eight feet away, has to step in. Tough shot, can't get it to fall, and had him in there for the rebound. The outlet to Wilson in the open court. He spins underneath the Springer. Great play. What recognition by Travis Wilson as he brought everybody to him and laid it off for Springer for the easy bucket left side. And it's a 10-point, 12-2 lead for the Maroons. Sherman has it in the front court. He grinds to go baseline left. Can't get the job done. Now Riva is going to be fouled as Cottrell a little too much. Boy, they like to make that baseline pass, don't they? Well, I'll tell you what, in, in, in the defense Moline's playing, they'll trap you behind that backboard. You're not even going to get a shot. So that's kind of an unusual pattern to try to get somebody free, even if he catches that ball. That's a third pass that the Cavs have done, so they must be very successful because you very seldom see teams make that pass. And now the Maroons knock it away, but Sherman runs it down on the left wing. Steps inside to Riva behind the curve, his three-pointer off the iron, no good. Battle for the rebound and picked out by Wilson on the run. Great outlet pass to Springer. He'll lay it up and it's good with the left hand. Kenny Springer, a big first quarter. It's 14 to two and the Maroons are out quickly. Leone over to Riva. He comes in the right side on the baseline. Cut off by Hanneman. Cross courses it to Leone to Toronto. Underneath it goes. Layup up and good by Jake Sherman as that time the Cavaliers passed the ball perfectly around the zone and found Sherman wide open on the baseline left side. Cottrell has it in the front court as the Maroons break the pressure. Cottrell lays it off to Springer. This time he can't get it off. Hanneman will spin up in the air. Shot good. Ian Hanneman as they got Toronto off his feet. Boy, LaSalle Peru's not getting many shots. That's, that's another thing. And the big guys until right now have been non-existent. Nice pass by Toronto to Klobuchar who lays it in off the left side. 
been the only weak spot of the Maroon defense. Wilson in the open court, and Wilson is fouled by Sherman. A little bit too close. As Wilson just spun on him and headed out, he went down to try and draw a charge, but he's nowhere in the area of Wilson when he goes down as Wilson's no. dribbling away, and he picks up the foul, the third team foul for the Cavs. Four whistled against the Maroons. It's 16 to six with 2.34 to go, and the Maroons are doing a lot of things right here in the first five and a half minutes of this basketball game. As DeVilder attacks a man-to-man -man by the Cavs. DeVilder on the right wing, fans it out to the right side, now goes to the right baseline, brings it back out to the wing again, lays it off to Hanneman, underneath it goes to Cottrell, who goes and runs it down as Klobuchar knocks it away. Now Hanneman, cross-court pass, shoots the three. No, he tried to go up. He's got to be more precise. It's a turnover, but it looked like he was wide open from three, but then tried to pass it off. Long three ball, no good. Wilson again with the long rebound as Toronto misses it, lays it off to Springer, layup good. What a combination in the first quarter. It's been Wilson to Springer, who's finished off nicely from the left side every time. Riva steps to the free throw line, looks underneath, ball knocked away by Cottrell, a little more active as the long arms again as Cottrell from his left baseline position, able to rotate, knock the ball out of bounds. Well, the fans have an opportunity to see Moline play. Those that have seen him uh, realize great wingspan. Coach Dexter has talked about almost every interview, but just if you take a look at him, man, they, they, they cover all the passing lanes. Riva, deep to Leone. They have to start their offense. So deep, Leone steps to the curve, kind of a set shot, off, battle for the rebound. Adam Riva has it, he steps underneath. Great pass as Klobuchar misses the bunny. And the builder picks up the rebound. Klobuchar in close, couldn't call, get it to fall at 6-9. Now Wilson, open court layup, good, oh boy. Unbelievable. Big time Unbelievable. move by Travis Wilson. Hung in the air and kissed it off the glass for two, 20 to six. And now Wilson with the steal and they'll call the foul. Boy, what quick hands that time by Travis. Wilson looked like he had the pocket pick, but the quick foul call, his first. The fifth whistled against the Maroons with 1.02 to go in the first quarter, and this has been all Maroon basketball. And they have <laughs> much improved since the last time they beat Rock Island. Isn't that something? This team is really playing well, making great floor decisions, and releasing extremely well. They are. Well, and, they, and they, they've got great patience. You know, they get down there quick if they got an opportunity. He stepped on the line, yes. Yep, great defense that time by Hanneman. Hanneman backed up and put his foot on the baseline, and Riva fell down, but hit the baseline, and another Cavalier turnover as that's the third, fourth? Third on each team. DeBuilder swings it to Cottrell to the middle of the court to Hanneman, bounce past the Springer, and he lost control of it a little too low as Hanneman's pass was behind Springer, Springer needs that ball delivered by Wilson, I think. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that, that combination has worked for, for three That's fast right. break baskets. You betcha. 39 seconds, and the Cavaliers have it. They trail by 14. Ball goes underneath and knocked away by Cottrell as Jake Sherman at 6-3 tried to feed it into Klobuchar at 6-9, but Cottrell just batted it away, and it belongs to the Cavs. Leone looks, he still looks, and now he gets it into Klobuchar in the corner, back to Leone, and it's knocked out of bounds by Wilson, and Wilson did not realize that the ball was coming right to yeah. him. <laughs> well, long arms again, though. You just watch as these kids pr uh, play this defense. There are no passes that are sure things right now for LaSalle Peru. Toronto gets it over to Sherman. He finds Leone. Leone looks, gets it back to Sherman. Sherman travels with the basketball. I thought he was going to shoot it, but he took the extra hop step. Another turnover with 22.2 seconds to go. The Cavs continue to pressure the basketball, and DeVilder gets it into Hanneman. To Springer in the middle of the court to Wilson. Wilson bounce passes it to Cottrell, who holds it up for one. Didn't have the good angle, nope. and he waits for one with 12 seconds to go. Now Cottrell on the left wing. Underneath it goes to DeVilder, layup no good, but a foul is called as they got DeVilder wide open against the six foot one Adam Riva 
as Riva reaches in and DeVille Durrell stepped to the line to shoot two. It looked like that time that LaSalle Peru just committed the fact that Moline was going to go for the last second shot and with 6.4 seconds to go, they looked like they relaxed their defense just a little bit. DeVille Durrell will step to the line. He got wide open underneath. He got away from Riva and got the great pass. Shot up and good. His third point of the first quarter. He'll have one more. And the lead is 15. And the Maroons have, have done absolutely nothing wrong in the first eight minutes of this ball game. They missed another field offensive ball, board. But an offensive board by Hanneman over to Wilson with two seconds. He raises for three and nails oh, 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 oh. it. Travis Wilson with a Michael Jordan rise to the three-point shot. It was high archer went through. And after the first quarter, it's Moline 24, LaSalle Peru 6. We'll be right back to Dixon after this timeout. <laughs> well, as the Maroons huddle around Frank Dexter, you can't play a better quarter of basketball, Jim. No, you can't. And, and it'll, just the way you, you, you draw it up, you know, as a coach, you hope we're going to go to a tough ball game, playing a team that's only lost twice, uh, puts us in a championship game, and, and if you had a dream last night and everything went right, you still might not come out 24 to 6. Yeah, and you might not play this well either, but <laughs> exactly. they have, every player has made great decisions with the basketball. As checking into the ball game comes Tom Dyke, a 6'5 senior, so he'll get some action. Really long arms, Mark. Long arms, good player. As Springer knocks the ball away and he gets a late whistle and a foul call, Kenny picks up his second personal foul. As they move to Rondo at 6'8", out to the top to look over everybody and deliver the basketball. But the Maroons have really let him alone out there. And now coming in will be Marcus Morrow. Morrow, who's been having a great time of it coming off the bench. You bet. Quick 6'1 guard, 6-foot guard. Underneath it goes to Klobuchar, up and good. Kevin Klobuchar with just the fourth basket for LP. It's 24 to 8. And now Morrow will see if he runs the offense or they leave it to DeVilder. Nope, they're going to leave it to DeVilder as the Cavaliers come out in what appears to be a 2-3 kind of a matchup. Dyke underneath the ball, kicked out of bounds by Koblicher. It belong to the Maroons underneath their own basket as Travis Wilson will inbound. Well, Dyke adds to this ball club, rebounding and, and great hustle. Morrow comes in, got long arms again, a little offensive threat, quick hands, a great co contribution off the bench. As Morrow misses the shot off, a nice bounce pass from Morrow, but he has under heavy pressure, and the ball just couldn't fall, and the Cavs pick up the rebound. As Riva swings the ball over to Sherman, and they find Leon. Leon into the corner to Riva. Riva comes against Morrow on that side as Morrow steps out, knowing Riva's a good shooter. Leon out to Sherman. He shoots the three up, no good. Morrow clears the ball. Morrow on the dribble, lays it off to DeVilder. It's knocked away. He goes and gets it and gives it over to DeVilder finally. Into the front court, it's Hanavan. Now back to DeVilder, and the Maroons spread the offense. Dyke in the middle, the other four players all around the points. As DeVilder steps to the three, spins out, no good, battle up, rebound good by Hanneman. Ian Hanneman off the offensive board, puts it back, it's 26 to eight. Leon to Riva, Riva on the right side, comes against the Moline double team, holds it up. Gives it back to Toronto, the 6'8 junior. Toronto now, Finds Leon, who fans the ball to the left side, back to Toronto at the free throw line. He spins, ball knocked away nicely. Klobuchar gets it, puts up the jump shot, no good, and Hanneman out to Wilson left side. Wilson with the dribble drive, pulls up, jump shot up, off the back iron, no good. Battle for the rebound, Dyke has it, his short shot, no good, and there's gonna be a foul as Toronto picks up the rebound, and we'll see who it's against. Either Morrow or Dyke will pick up the foul. It's going to be on Tom Dyke after he missed the short jump shot. He picks up his first, and that'll put the Cavs to the free throw line for the one and bonus. As the officials now get it figured out from the bench, and we'll see who shoots it. It should be Toronto with the one and bonus. The officials now catch it. Well, that's who I gave the rebound to, so I, hopefully that's correct. The Maroons hit two out of three from the free throw line in the first quarter, while the Cavs myth missed both of theirs. So 6'8", junior, Brandon Torondo 
Boy, he made a nice move, but put the ball back behind his head, and it, boy, it's gone. You, you can't do that when you're 6'8". No. no, you sure can't. Makes everybody the same height as you. Free throw up, and good. So Toronto's good on the first, his first point. He'll have one more. And South Peru really needs some kind of a, a break, something to get them going. The crowd is quiet now. The South Peru crowd came in, looked like they were going pretty rowdy, but they're quiet right now. Toronto hits both, and Dyke has it quickly tomorrow in the front court on the left wing. Looks to go baseline, but pulls it back out to DeVilder, gets it to Hadaman underneath to Dyke. Dyke can't get the shot off back to Hadaman to DeVilder. DeVilder will show a little patience against this 2-3 zone. The Cavaliers trying to find something to work. They came out in a man-to-man, -man and the Maroons absolutely shredded that. DeVilder steps inside, knocked away by Riva, and Sherman has it, and Wilson knocks it away, and Toronto comes out dribbling. Ahead to Leon, underneath the Klobuchar. Klobuchar turns, shot up, good. Kevin Klobuchar got the ball on the left block and knew what to do with it. It's 26 to 12. As the builder stepped in, Riva knocked it away, and Klobuchar got the nice shot at the other end of the floor. Morrow, now a double team, a lot of pressure on the basketball to Wilson underneath. Shot blocked, boy. They, well, it's gonna, Klobuchar had all basketball, but they're gonna call it with the body on Toronto. Like I say, if they call it on Klobuchar, he had all basketball. Yeah, he did a nice job. And I tell you, if you can block a shot of Travis Wilson, you've done a, a, a yeoman's job. I'll tell you that right now. Moline needs to attack this zone. And like they did last time, they got the ball ahead of it at the high post. That's even against Moline's zone. That's where you need to get the ball. And then you can go low from there. But Moline's been there already. Wilson at the free throw line. First shot up and good. He's now two out of two from the line. He has 11 points in the first half. 6-2 Junior. Played a great first half. Second free throw up, and it's perfect. He's three for three. 12 points, and the Maroons pressure in the 2-1-2 as Leon beats it and now holds it up. Gets a double team over to Riva. Riva tries to get underneath, no. and there's Wilson. Not going to go. Back. Not going to go not, through there. You're not going to make that pass. As he gets it back to Morrow, almost traveled, and Morrow recovers. Gets it to Springer behind the curve. Shot good. Kenny Springer. A big first half for Kenny with 12 points. And the Maroons extend the lead to 31 to 12. And Paul Marshit wants another timeout. So with. 4.48 to go, and the Maroons on top, 31 to 12, will take this break on 1270 WKBF. Mark Gellerman back with Jim Sanders, and Jim, this Moline Maroon team is really playing super basketball. Well, I tell you, for, for your uh, general audience, it only gets a chance to see them play a couple times a year. You've really missed this coming of age of a, of a very good basketball team. This is the kind of team that you see playing in, in uh, I almost said Champagne, but you're going to see them play in, in Peoria because they've just got chemistry, they've got size, quickness, they've got the great players, and I'm going to put DeVilder and uh, Travis Wilson in that category, and everybody else has, has a, a contribution to make. Toronto baseline shot blocked away by Hanneman of Sherman's shot, and the Maroons have it. Sprager quickly in the front court to DeVilder, left wing. He steps in, bank shot up, too hard, no good, and there's Sherman with the rebound quickly out to Riva. Riva crosses over, stops at the curve, shot up, no good. That was not a three-point shot, even though if it had gone, they would have given it to him. He was right on the line, because we had a great angle of that in front of our broadcast location. Morrill with the basketball. We'll see what defense. They're still in the zone, but they come out and pressure the basketball, and Morrill's going to get the offensive charge. It's either that or it's going to be a five count, count, one or the other. So Morrill turns it over on the offensive foul. Again, we want to remind you that you're listening to and watching high school basketball on WKBF 1270 in Rock Island and TCI Channel 38, the Family Ties Productions and Zound Foundation joining forces to bring you this great high school basketball game. And it's really fun to watch these Moline Maroons. Jim Sanders along with Mark Gellerman bringing you all the action as the LaSalle Peru Cavaliers try and find a way to solve this mystery, and they can't. The builder steals it. Look at Ahead this. to Springer. Over to Morrow. Layup. Good. Yeah. What a nice break. 
Kenny Springer after getting three great passes from Wilson underneath. It's Klobuchar, he goes up and travels with the basketball. Great play by Kenny Springer. He went flying at Klobuchar, and Klobuchar went up top. And 6'9", <laughs> just really go up. You know, if, if for the fans watching this, and a few folks at home listening to it on the radio, the big guys from South Peru are non-existent. They're 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, they might as well be 6'1", six, 6'2", six, right now, because Moline is taking it to him every time. 33 to 12. Morrow underneath the Hanneman in the corner. It goes to the builder. He drives baseline. Shot blocked away nicely. and saved by Wilson to Hanneman, who will be called for traveling. He likes to do that. <laughs> We've seen that. That's for a sure. As, as he uh, normally gets away with that, but Springer comes out. Cottrell comes back in. But what a great play by Wilson, who saved the block shot underneath the Moline basket. Got it to Hanneman. Had he been able to make the move, he would have had the layup. But the ball comes the other way. The Cavs have it. Underneath it goes to Klobuchar. He reverses, and Morrow fouls him. That time he went up finally strong and didn't worry about anybody. At 6'9", he just got to do that because they're getting him the ball. The Maroons overplaying the passing lanes in that zone, trying to knock it away. But you can do that when you lead 33 to 12. You betcha. You betcha. But they finally got, the, like you say, the low post play out of that. And Moline was probably a little late reacting from the backside. Didn't quite get across there. Kevin Klobuchar's free throw is good. He has nine of the 15 points the Cavaliers have put up. The Maroons have put up 33 as Morrow comes against the zone. It goes to Hanneman, and Hanneman travels again. A little uncertain that well, time, I think. What he wanted to do, he's so wide open, it surprised him, I think. Hanneman, most of the time, gets away with that move in the Western Big Six, but tonight he's not getting away with it. Well, so you got to stop doing it. Yep, that's the key. The good players will do that now, make the adjustment. Underneath the pass to Sherman from Toronto. He's got to swing it back wow. way to Leon to Riva, and Riva travels with the basketball, and he knew it. <laughs> he had Hanneman. Riva at 6'1", probably has that shot, what, 80% of the time? No question. And Hanneman at 6'5", isn't going to give him no. that shot. No. Sub in the lineup for LaSalle, Peru. Coming in is Ryan Whitecotton, a 5'8", junior guard. So Whitecotton into the ball game for Leon. Morrow gets underneath to Wilson. He passes it underneath, knocked away. Hanneman can't handle it, and Toronto does. White Cotton into the front court to Riva. His jump shot for three is good. That time, same spot, but no Hanneman as the Cavs got the ball quickly down to their shooter, Riva. That's just his second basket of the ball game, averaging 21 and a half points. He has five. It's 33 to 18. Morrow bounces it back to DeVilder. And the builder comes against the 2-3. Now Morrow as the Maroons have now slowed the pace of the basketball quite a bit. Morrow steps inside, gives it to Wilson. Wilson comes left side, and Riva's going to get called for reaching in. A silly foul by Riva because that's his second. You really don't want to pick that one up. You don't. And Mark, I think one thing to keep in mind right now is that we talked earlier about Moline, you know, giving you a chance to get back in the ball game. We've got one minute, 57 seconds to go here in the half, and, and LaSalle Peru is making a little move here, so the Maroons need to pick it up again. Well, you had talked about that before the game. Ball up and good. Travis Wilson. Wilson. Nice his, pass by Morrow. His first shot, and now Morrow's going to pick up his third foul, reaching in, and Reva will shoot a one and one. So Morrow, three quick fouls, and that will bring off the Moline bench Andrew Boster, a 5'10 senior. Boster, a chance to senior or junior? I thought uh, it's got him listed as a senior. Uh, yeah, I'm not I, sure. I thought he was a junior. I thought also. he was a junior too. Boster has contributed this year. Anytime the guards get in foul trouble, he's been the man off the bench, and he's done an excellent job playing very good defense and hustling up and down that floor. Riva, after missing his first two, buries this one. He'll have one more. Second one off the back iron, no good. Tip, and there's going to be a foul on Wilson going over the back of Toronto as Toronto outbattled Wilson for the basketball as Travis picks up his second foul. And right now, Frank Dexter, with two almost two minutes to go in the half, has got to be a little concerned. Wilson, Springer, and Earl all with two, and Morrow already on the bench with three. The shot up and good by Brandon Toronto. He'll have one more. Toronto's becoming a factor in this ballgame right now. He just, all of a sudden, he's showing up almost every time down the floor. Second one up and good. He's four for four from the line for all four points. 
and the Maroons have put the Cavs into the double bonus. 140 to go, the lead's trimmed to 14. Now DeVilder walks it across. The zone has bothered the Maroons. Underneath it goes to Hanneman, baseline jump shot off the front iron, no good, and there's Tarando again for a rebound. Finds Sherman ahead to White Cotton, and he holds it up. Spins the ball over to Sherman on the right side. They look for Riva as he runs the baseline. Riva has it in the right corner. His three ball up, no good. Battle for the rebound. Klobuchar has it, can't get the bunny to fall. Battle for the rebound. Toronto keeps it alive, and Hanneman comes out dribbling. Hanneman into the front court baseline to Wilson, and he gets it to, from Cottrell. And the Maroons just look a little bit out of sync right here. Well, you got some starters on the bench right now getting a little rest, and it sometimes it makes a little difference here, but you got that guy out there all the time. DeVilder with a dribble drive from six feet buries the fadeaway jump shot, and it's 37 to 21. Talk about a big play. <laughs> Sherman on the baseline, cut off by Cottrell. Gives it back to Toronto. He steps underneath, tries to get it to Klobuchar. Hanneman knocked it away, couldn't control it. Sherman does and puts in the jumper from eight feet. On the left wing with 25 seconds to go, DeVilder walks it up. We'll look at the clock, it shows 20 to go, a 37-23 Moline lead. But then again, this team is 24 and two, they are gonna do something right. Yeah, they're not gonna fold, I'll guarantee you that. The LP kids have always been very competitive, very tough, and they're they're here to play a basketball game. It just hasn't gone their way so far. DeVilder pushes off, gets away with it, shoots a running one-hander and gets the bounce and the fall. Nick DeVilder at the buzzer has no call on the push off. As the Cavaliers really needed that call, the Maroons go into halftime leading 39 to 23. We'll be right back with our halftime program on Championship Basketball 1997. Oh, that was wow. a big call. Huge call. Or no call. Welcome back to TCI Channel 38, Family Ties Productions, Zound Foundation, WKBF, and we have high school basketball as we start the second half with the Maroons leading 39-23. They have the ball to Dorian Earl, to Hanneman on the baseline. Hanneman doesn't want it. Earl back in the ball game. He picked up two early fouls. Passes underneath to Wilson. He moves layup up and good. That's just great athletic ability by Travis Wilson. Caught the ball in traffic, laid it up in traffic under control. And you see that every game, several times every game. Reba cross courts the ball to Sherman. Back to Leon. Leon wide open, doesn't want the jump shot underneath. Nice pass to Klobuchar. His jump shot up, no good. Second one is good. Kevin Klobuchar, the high low pass from Brandon Torondo. It's 41 25. And now the Cavs come out with a little different press. Looks like a one, well, it might be a one, two, two. Wilson from eight feet bank shot, no good. Battle for the rebound. And coming out on the run is Sherman. Now slows it up to Leon, who goes down the right side over to Riva on the right wing. He stops, he shoots the long three off the front iron, no good. Hanneman pulls down the rebound quickly out to DeVilder. DeVilder left side, he'll lay it up and it's good. Nick DeVilder, nice move by Wilson as he came across the lane, brought, brought the defense with him and DeVilder went behind it. Well, everybody on that team from South Peru has to understand where where Travis is at, and they're all looking at him. That leaves everybody else wide open. Reba, left baseline, spin move around Hanneman. Looked like he got fouled, and Wilson pulls down the rebound. Wilson comes left side over to Springer, and Springer was looking at the rim and not the basketball, and it went off his knee, a turnover. Anything stand out statistically in that first half? Well, I'll tell you what, Moline made 18 out of 26 shots in the first half for 70%. The South Peru started out at 30%, three for 10, but came back with a five for nine second quarter for 42 percent usually you shoot 42 percent where you ought to be in the ball game somewhere but Moline did a great job shooting the basketball Toronto steps around gives it back to Leon his set shot from three no good and Hanneman with another rebound out to Wilson Wilson to Springer to back to Wilson off the back iron no good or old tip can't go and Toronto comes out dribbling to Reva on the right side Reva steps between two players turn around jump shot eight feet no good and Hanneman with another rebound 
Hanneman quickly to DeVilder, and the long pass knocked away, but right to Earl, to Wilson. Nice block up by Klobuchar, and they'll call traveling on Wilson. Looked like he got a dribble in there, hard to tell. But Wilson gets the turnover call, and the Cavs have the basketball. I think what he was going to get one or the other, both of them are bad. He was going to get traveling, he was going to get an offensive foul for trying to back back in there, but uh, uh, several turnovers early here now. As Toronto makes the baseline move, and I think Earl's going to pick up the blocking foul. Earl on the baseline, he had the good position, but he reached in, and that's his third personal foul as he'll come out and Cottrell will come back in. It'll be out of bounds underneath the Cavs basket. They trail 43 to 25 as Leone looks to trigger. Gets it over to Sherman. Sherman drives, dotted line, layup, no good, and Hanneman with another rebound to DeVilder to Wilson in the open court. Wilson goes up and fouled hard by Riva, and Riva just reached in and made sure he couldn't get the easy basket as Riva is definitely frustrated. Yes, he is. Well, he's they're pressuring him at one end, and he's not scoring like he wants to, and now he's having to come back, and, and the numbers are always against him. Travis coming down two on one. That's unbelievable odds for him. So Wilson will step back to the free throw line where he's hit all three. He has 16 points, and he's been very active, and the other thing, very under control. That's exactly right. Spins the ball back into his right hand after a couple dribbles. Free throw up and good. He'll have one more. 44 to 25. He'll try and put the lead back up to 20. You watch Moline play all confidence. Every, every player, they got that look of confidence in their eye. They're ready to play. This one spins out. Klobuchar with the rebound, and he finds Leone on the right side. Baseline, it goes to Sherman, and there's Ian Hanneman to, to <laughs> knock it out of bounds. Well, you just can't make that soft. And you can't, and, and we talk about this a lot uh, on TCI, a uh, channel 38, where, you know, just knocking the ball out of bounds is rough. That wasn't a steal, but they, they made LP start over again. Brandon Toronto, a turnaround 14-footer off the inbounds pass. I think you want to give him that shot all day. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but evidently, <laughs> but if, if he buries it like that, that you got to change the defense just a little. Wilson Cottrell has... DeVilder tries the three. Hanneman's put back is short. No good. Another one up and good. Ian Hanneman just stayed right with it. Missed the first two, but not the third. It's 46-27. And now Wilson knocks it out of bounds as they had Sherman trapped against the sideline in front of the LP bench. Sherman gives it back to Leone in the backcourt. And he walks it up against the 1-2-2. To Riva, he'll shoot the long three. It'll be off the rim, no good. He runs it down in the corner, but he throws it right to Cottrell, and now DeVilder wants to attack. At the free throw line, short jump shot, good. How about Nick, body control there? Nick DeVilder floated in from the free throw line for a 10-footer and another LP wow. timeout. Wow. Unbelievable. With the score 48-27, the Maroons playing spectacular basketball. We'll be back to Dixon for more of our third quarter coverage. Mark Gellerman and Jim, as you were saying in the break, this team is really playing unselfish basketball. All oh, they do. And Nick DeVilder, I, I, mean, I keep bringing that name up, but uh, you just watch him play, and he's totally under control. He, he got great body control, plays great defense. That whole team out there is playing a lot of confidence. Right now, shooting percentage, after that 70% first half, Moline has made uh, four out of nine here in the third quarter. And they've extended the lead. Sherman has the basketball, drives against the zone. They find Riva left baseline. He's cut off by Springer. Tough shot on the baseline that goes in. Well, the Maroons will give him that shot all the time under heavy pressure about 12 feet away on the left baseline, and Wilson attacks the other way. He stops, he'll get called for the charge. Yep. Hey, his first mistake of the basketball game is Klobuchar waited for Travis Wilson, his third personal foul, and that time all Travis had to do was shoot the eight foot. That's right. And even that, with his great body control, he made it an iffy call. You yeah. know, it was obviously gonna be a charge, but he moved so well in the air that he just caught part of the defender, but it was still an offensive foul. We talked about shooting percentages. LP now has come back in this third quarter and, and made three out of about nine or 10 shots. So they've gone the other way. Gone the other way, yep. 
Riva, for example, is one for five at this point. Yeah, he only has three baskets for a player who's scoring 22 points a ball game. So you know he's the one they want to shoot the basketball. But again, he's been under heavy pressure right. all game long. Three out of 11. Torondo gets it to Leon, who walks it across the timeline right side. Runs into Wilson, gives it back to Sherman. Over to Leon, Leon off the right wing to Sherman, who comes that way, spins it back to Riva. Riva steps to the curve, shot up, short, no good. He follows his own shot, and Springer didn't cut him off, and now Hanneman fouls him. Hanneman puts Riva on the baseline, and that really was Kenny Springer's fault as he put pressure on the shooter, but then forgot to seal him off. That's right, that's right. Aggressive mistake, though, and the thing I, I like about Moline, as you watch the rest of this or listen to the rest of this quarter, uh, they seldom make the same mistake twice. You, Travis Wilson charged, but he may not charge again. Uh, a, a, a foul there probably won't happen again. Shot up and good. So Riva finds his distance from the free throw line. He now has nine points. And 10 as he buries both. And the Cavs come with full court pressure to Wilson behind his back. Through three players, gets it ahead to Cottrell, who slows it up. Hanneman has it between the circles. He finds DeVilder, now Cottrell. Cottrell drives the baseline, pulls it back out. And DeVilder says, we'll wait for the double team to come. That's right, because the gets holes to, open up. Gets it to Wilson. Wilson gets it to the baseline to Cottrell. Wide open 12-footer, good. Steve Cottrell buries the baseline jump shot. It's 50 to 31. The Maroons lead the Cavs. DeVilder almost with the pick. Leone underneath, foul, shot up and good. Oh, on the they, call, they call it on the pass as Cottrell got there late, hit, him, hit Klobuchar, and they called it on the floor. A 50-50 call there. <laughs> I'll tell you. The LP's coach didn't realize it until uh, the official got there that it wasn't going to count. That basket wasn't going to count. But he was specific when he made the call. We knew made, that basket yeah. wasn't going to count. Torondo in the left corner underneath the Klobuchar between his hands. Out to Leone. Riva drives. Dotted line. Jump shot no good. Torondo misses. And Hanneman with another rebound. He's got to have about 10 for the ball game. Springer in the front court. Now Wilson in the left corner and he waits. Crosses it to DeVilder. Steps to the curve and buries it. Woo! Dick DeVilder with the cross-court pass, a quick, hard pass from corner to corner, and DeVilder buries the three. Riva drives, short jump shot off the iron, no good, tip up and good with a left hand by Brandon Perando. It's 53-33. 2.28 to go in the third quarter as Hanneman beats the press to Wilson in the middle of the floor to Quattrell. Oh, look out. And oh, watch out as high in the air goes Jake Sherman, who goes on the back of Steve Cottrell, and the Moline Maroons will have it out underneath their own basket. Marcus Morrow gets ready to check in. And the Maroons will get the basketball back and as a great fake by Cottrell. And Sherman went flying. You just don't want to see that happen. And now <laughs> Travis Wilson finally figures out he's the player who's coming out. So he's going to get a rest with 2.21 to go. He has three fouls and 17 points. Now the officials will confer again. And we'll see. It must be that they're not real sure who the fouls yeah, I are. Think that's the, I think that's the situation yeah, right now. Yeah, it's on 30, not 20. Because that was not on Riva. They got it fixed. Yep, we got that taken care of. Good officiating Yep, there. they double checked. Get it right. Springer, underneath his basket, looks and finally has to throw it deep to Hanneman. Now back to the builder tomorrow. Free throw line, Hanneman. He traveled again, but they don't call it. Hanneman spins left side, short shot, no good. And there's Torondo for the rebound ahead to Sherman. Sherman in the corner to Reba. He'll shoot the long Lock. shot. Springer blocks it, and Hanneman gets the rebound. Let's give DeVilder that block. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. DeVilder all over it. <laughs> Cottrell walks across, gives it to Hanneman, who skips a little bit again. But DeVilder, three, no good. Tip. Oh, what a play by Hanneman, who tipped it underhand with the right hand and had enough power on it to get it over the front edge of the rim and a 55 to 33 lead. Sherman 
has the basketball over to Rondo, who'll shoot the three off the right side, no good. Hanneman with the rebound, and Leon picks up the foul. The South Peru is very frustrated right now. They, you know, the ball's not going in the basket. Moline's hitting the boards real, real well. That zone helps you. That one, two, two zone gets you a lot of good rebounding position, and it's just a tough night for LP. Ryan Witt, White Cotton checks in. A 5'8 junior, he gets Leon. Also coming back for Frank Dexter will be Tom Dyke, the 6'5 senior, and he'll get Steve Cottrell. Dyke, very offensive-minded yeah. when he gets in the game, he if, if he gets the ball in the block area. You betcha. Now here again, he knows in the offensive pattern, that's where his shot's at, and the Maroons will take that shot when they get the one that they like. They'll take it. The builder breaks the press to Hanneman, to Springer. He'll shoot the 16-foot jump shot. No good. Battle for the rebound. Tip up by Hanneman twice. And finally, Morrow got it, I think. We'll see if we can listen to see who got it. They give it to Ian Hanneman. Hanneman with the tip. I think Morrow really tipped it in. And now, underneath, I think Dyke will pick up the pushing foul against Brandon Torondo. A little too much activity underneath as Tom Dyke picks up his second foul. Now checking in to the Cavalier lineup will come J.J. Carrion, 6'1", senior. So Carrion checks in. And the Cavs have the ball. They get it to Toronto. Morrow knocks it loose. And Sherman gets it. Baseline, it goes right side. Reva loses it as Hanneman steals it from him. As Reva is extremely frustrated on that baseline, he just can't get anything going, because each time he looks, there's somebody 6-5. And now a 10-second call against the Wilder, as what happened was the count started when Hanneman stole the basketball, exactly. and he had about a four count just getting possession of the exactly ball. Right. Yeah. And so the Wilder didn't recognize it, because he thought he had plenty of time, right. and by that, the Maroons turn it over. White Cotton with the basketball. Lades it off to carry on. Underneath it goes to Toronto. Back to White Cotton. He steps in for a 14-footer off the front rim. No good. And there again is Hanneman. Outlet pass to Springer. Springer has the ball knocked away. And a foul called on, oops, another new player. Jason Jones is in the ball game. So Jason Jones picks up his first personal foul. Coming in for the Maroons. Back comes Steve Cottrell. And also checking in. You'll have to help me here. Is that Ryan Dexter? Let me get a quick look here. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. So Ryan Dexter, the 5'9 sophomore, checks in. He's a good ball handler. Had a chance to see him play some varsity. And of course, watching a lot of the sophomore games this year, he, uh, he can handle it. Shot. Up and good by Springer. He'll have one more. He was fouled on the breakaway. Second one up. And it's off the back iron, no good. And White Cotton runs it down. And Cottrell is there. And White Cotton steps out of bounds. It belongs back to the Maroons with 21.4 seconds to go. And a 58-33 lead for Frank Dexter and the Maroons. Dexter, all the way back to Morrow, gets control of the basketball, and comes against the 1-2-2 two, two, Toronto right there to meet him. Morrow gives it up to Cottrell, now to Dexter. Dexter steps in, baseline to Dyke with nine seconds to go. Dyke gets it to the middle of the floor to Morrow, get it to Springer behind the curve, shot up and good! Kenny Springer buries the three, and after three quarters of play, the Moline Maroons on their way to a Friday night contest with the Silver Streaks as they lead easily 61 to 33. The score's easy, the contest hasn't, but the Maroons have done everything right. We'll be back for our final eight minutes after this timeout. Scored, yeah. <laughs> Unreal. Back at the start of the third quarter, Whit Cotton has the basketball. He comes to the middle of the floor against the 1 2 2 as his team trails 61 to 33. Long three point jump shot off 
No good as Springer there for the rebound as Sherman well short. Long pass down to Wilson, left side, layup up. No good as Carrion picks up the foul and Wilson goes and shoots two free throws. Great scoring by the Maroons, Jim. Uh, they're shooting the ball extremely well. As you said, they're shooting 50% yep. and the Cavs can't find it. No, they can't find it and it's get going from bad to worse right now. Turnover wise, they're staying about the same. Both teams are, uh, you know, Moline has 12 turnovers to nine for LaSalle, Peru. Wilson short on the first, he'll have one more. Maroons, Wilson has 17, Springer has 16, 14 for DeVilder and 10 for Hannibal to go along with 10 or 12 rebounds. And yeah. he misses two and Toronto there for the board. Lays it off to Ryan White Cotton. He comes the right side to Jones, back to White Cotton. As Cavaliers get a lot of youngsters in this ball game early. Ball goes on the baseline to carry on, left side, hands it back to Jones, his three-pointer from the corner no good, and Wilson comes out running. Behind his back to the middle of the floor to the left side, he'll lay it up, it'll be short, and a foul called on Jason Jones. At that time, Wilson just too much in the open court, and he'll shoot two free throws, and it's clear that the Cavs have figured that they're not gonna make it in this ball game. Now, as head coach Paul Kamarsic, there it is, Paul Kamarsic is getting a lot of players in this game. I suspect that Frank wants to have some consistency, maybe for about two or three minutes of the fourth quarter, and I would think then that he would want to rest for that Friday night basketball game. Uh, I agree. Team. Well, and the other thing too, of course, in a strange gym like this where you haven't played much, you want to get as many minutes as you can out of your starters so that they're ready to go Friday night again. Wilson this time hits both free throws as Jake Sherman heads to the locker room. I don't know what's wrong with him. Nope, now he's back in the game. My apologies, somebody else went. Carry on, shot up, no good. Hanneman there for another rebound. Quickly to Cottrell, down the right side. Lays it cross court to DeVilder. He doesn't want the three. Underneath it goes to Wilson. He spins, layup left side, no good. Wilson gets it back, blocked away by Toronto. Cottrell's put back is good. They just completely own the offensive board. It's 65 to 33, six and a half to go. Baseline, it goes to Jones. His shot up and good. Jason Jones buries the three from the left corner. It's 65 to 36. Hanneman to Wilson. Now back to DeVilder. Over to Springer. They play catch on the outside. DeVilder has it. He traveled again. And again, <laughs> I'm sorry, but he, he switches his pivot feet yeah. all the time. Well, that time it was Ian Hanneman, but. I uh, mean, that's what I meant. Yeah. Hanneman, not DeVilder. Right. My DeVilder, DeVilder will travel. <laughs> not, not that much. <laughs> Hanneman's the one who yeah. likes to do it. Cottrell on the left baseline. Ball knocked away by White Cotton, but he's on the sideline right in front of Frank Dexter, that it belongs back to the Maroons. When he gets to the middle of the floor, Hanneman, he has a tendency to change yep. that pivot yes, foot he real does. quick, and, yes, he and he's been very successful in his career about getting away with it. Well, you're looking for that good, quick first step, but you want to also want a big one because you got to have time to get that ball down, yeah. too. You're not getting that ball down, it doesn't work. Dorian Earl comes back. Cottrell, who's really played a great floor game, comes out. He was rewarded by a great offensive putback before. You bet. You want to do this now because what Frank is doing is putting in the subs to go that, that are normally in the ball game and, and getting some minutes with each group. I think that's real smart too. Coach Dexter, I think we haven't said enough uh, and had enough has been written about what a great job he and his staff have done with this basketball team. Well, they had to find chemistry. They did. And lots of times that's very difficult to find. Well, last year they had a lot of these same kids with high expectations and it just didn't quite pan out. This year, high expectations, a terrible start. And then all of a sudden, look what's happened now. Hanneman gets the offensive board after the missed free throw by Kenny Springer and DeVilder has it to Earl. Earl steps out and now he looks for Wilson. Now he drives, left side, nice pass to Hanneman who ducks it off the left side. Hanneman, a power move off the baseline, and it's 67 to 36. Great the, setup there by Dorian Earl. And in the NBA, that might have been travel. <laughs> Carry on, drives, the ball comes loose, he tries to get it up, Hanneman knocks on it, Jones tries to save it, but he hits it against the back of the glass that belongs to the Maroons. For the Cavaliers, Brandon Toronto checks out, and coming in comes Dave Munson. 
So Munson checks in, and now this team is very, very short. And all, all non-starters. All non-starters. I think probably all juniors. Earl gives it to Hanovan. Hanovan back to Earl. To DeVilder. DeVilder steps in, tries the 15-footer off the iron. No good. And I think Wilson will get called for the push. He'll pick up his fourth personal foul. And Morrow will come back in. And I think we've seen the end of Travis Wilson. Yep. Great game. Five minutes to go in the ball game. Also coming in for the Maroons is Andrew Boster. But Boster comes in, and I think he'll get the Vilder. Yep. So Travis Wilson ends with 19 points. The Vilder checks out with a great four game and 14 points. Now Springer on the top of the 1 2 2. White Cotton comes to the left side, spins it back. To Nick Schweirich, and Schweirich throws it out of bounds. Who's checked into the ball game? A six-foot junior. Tom Dyke gets ready to check in, and he'll get Ian Hanneman. Hanneman leads with 12 points and umpteen rebounds. Definitely a double-double for Ian Hanneman no here tonight. About that. As he controlled the boards, especially in that third quarter, and did not allow the Cavs to make any run at all at the Maroons. Springer behind the curve, shot up back iron, no good. Carry on there, and Earl picks up the foul. One, two, three, four, five. That's the seventh team foul. And that will put J.J. Carrion on the free throw line to shoot the one and bonus. Well, Moline's got a really a nice crowd here tonight and uh, probably going to get bigger by Friday, I would think. Well, I sure would hope so <laughs> that if that... I know the, you Maroons, guys the, the Maroons haven't had much drawing power recently, no. but you, you get a team like this, you've got to come out and watch this team play. They are really exciting. And against the Silver Streaks with Joey Range, I suspect you can't have it any better than... No. That it's it, been even at Wharton Fieldhouse. Right. This is a small gym, so if you're a Maroon fan, get here early because there's only about 2,800 seats, and you'd probably want to fill this place up if you could. Well, they got a balcony that I think we could probably we should fill up uh, on Friday night also, but uh, you're right. Get here early, get a good seat, and enjoy the ball game. Shot by Jason Jones, buries the three, his second three of the ball game, both in the fourth quarter at 67 to 39 as Marcus Morrow comes against Jones. Morrow gets a double high pick, goes right side, uh -huh. throws it right to Earl, who would have had a layup had he looked back for the basketball. Yeah, the pick and roll was right pick there. Pick and roll was right there. And <laughs> Oops. Earl went to set the screen across the lane instead of down the lane. As three-pointer goes up, no good. Carry on with the long ball. Picks his pocket by Morrow, and Morrow comes the other way and throws it right to Dave Munson. As the Maroons didn't run the floor well that time, White Cotton comes back. Carry on on the right wing. Underneath it goes to Munson, he goes down for the count. <laughs> He's he up. got nailed. It was a standing eight. <laughs> As oh, carry on wow. hit him off the dribble, Morrow gives it back to Dexter. That is, the case, of, oh, that's a case of a bullet pass going <laughs> about three feet. <laughs> Morrow's jump shot, corner no good, and yep. a push off by Dyke. And somebody will go to the free throw line as Tom Dyke picks up his third personal foul. We'll stay with it as I surely did not expect that you would get all your players in in this basketball game with the number two and number three seed. Well, a couple things. One talking to Lanny Slevin and his partner from WLPO in, in uh, LaSalle, Peru. They were really concerned going into this ball game, obviously. And uh, is this I've Chris Whitaker, 42? Gotta be. Yes, it is. He's been out with a broken ankle all season. He's just still limping around quite a bit. Free throw up and good by Munson. He'll have one more. 3.30 to go, 67 to 40. Second one up, no good. Battle for the rebound. Whitaker can't handle it, but it's knocked out of bounds by Jason Jones, and it belongs to the Maroons. It's good to see a young man like that stay with, stay with the program. He obviously, he wasn't going to play much, if at all, this season. He was a, a returning, if I'm not mistaken, a returning yeah. starter. And I understand year. he played really well over the summer. Yep. Into the corner. Ball goes to Dyke. To Marcus Morrow gets out to Whitaker. They run a variation of the rub, and there's a travel call. 
against Ryan Dexter as he slid his pivot foot as he started to make his move. For the Cavs, in comes John Morsheiser. And for the Maroons, it's... Oops, 24 is in the ball game, but I, now, I'm having trouble calling the name. It's not in our program. B.J. Fisher, he comes in for Marcus Morrow, who finishes with two points. Springer finished with 16. Cottrell finished with four. And 24 is in the ball game. But I don't know who it is. But he's about 6'6". Six, six. <laughs> we, we know should, that. We should know his name, that's we should for know sure. His name. Shot up, missed. No good, battle for the rebound. And it's still loose, and Munson pulls it out to Jones. He stops, he shoots, and buries another three. Well, they got another shooter coming up behind Reba. He's three out of four, and all have been three-point shots. Ball into the front court, the Maroons have it. Whitaker on the right baseline, holds the ball up at the right wing. Looks underneath and throws it away. White Cotton steals it. 24 is a sophomore. I've, I've seen him play in the sophomore games during the year, but I, I apologize for not knowing his name. Jones shot up, no good. And there's Dexter for the rebound. He pulls it off, and White Cotton fouls it. So we will walk to the other end of the floor. As we do, we'll take this commercial break be back as Maroons lead 67 to 43. Can you hand me, can you hand me my uh, black, black briefcase? <laughs> Sophomore, sophomore I, yep. I think, yeah, he'll have one more. We finally pull out the program for Moline. As Ryan Dexter's at the line, he was good on his first one. Is that Damian Hook, maybe? That's, I think, yep, yeah, yeah, Dexter right. good on two, so we'll say it's Damian Hook, a 6'7 sophomore. Sophomore, that's right, exactly right. Ball into the front court, Cavs I'm, have it. I'm amazed, I'm in awe. Underneath, shot up, no good. Battle for the rebound, Munson has it, puts it back over his head, and he's fouled. <laughs> So Munson will go to the free throw line for the Cavaliers as they will finish their season with a spectacular. Make no mistake about it, you win 24 out of 27 games. That's, That's right. a great year. Great year. Obviously, they didn't play as well tonight as they would like. I think they could have played a near perfect game and still not beaten Moline tonight as good as, as uh, the Maroons played. But the LP uh, team we're seeing here is not the team that won 27 ball games. Munson too hard on the first free throw. He'll have one more. Well, great scoring balance and, and great play for the Maroons. Free throw line to free throw line really determined this exactly basketball right. game. Exactly right. Moley just did a great job. Munson's second free throw is good. He makes one of two. And for the Cavaliers, Munson goes after getting on the scoring column out. And in comes Eric Mertz. The Maroons get the ball in the hands of Ryan Dexter as he walks it to the timeline. He's met by a man-to-man -man defense. He goes to the left side, lays it off for Fisher. Fisher with the basketball right to Dexter, who buries the three. Ryan Dexter, five points and a 72-44 lead. The Cavs get the ball to Jones in the corner, and he buries his fourth three-pointer <laughs> of the quarter. What a shooting exhibition by Jason Jones. Now Dexter tries to answer, <laughs> can't do it, battle for the rebound, and it comes down to the Cavaliers. With the basketball for the Cavs, Mike Flaherty gets the ball over to Jones, back over to Michael Fisick, his shot up, no good, a battle for the rebound and the Maroons pull it down. Dexter has it in the open court, bounces it ahead to Whitaker, he steps in for the layup, good! Ryan Whitaker gets on the scoreboard. Jones tries another three off the iron, no good, and a foul called on the Cavaliers. I think it's gonna be on John Morsheiser. 
And going to the free throw line will be the big sophomore, Damian Hook. So Hook will get a chance to get into the scoring column as he'll shoot two free throws. And the Maroons get two more players into the ball game. Coming in is Adam Ryan, a 5'10 junior. Free throw up and good, and Hook with a closed fist with a little smile on his face says, yeah. He's got his first point. He'll have one more. Second one up, and this one rims off no good. The Cavs pull down the rebound. Also in the game is Nick Iams for the Maroons. Ball on the baseline, the Cavs comes loose. And Ryan picks it up, and Ryan's fouled. Nope. What'd they call? Not, not me. Unless they're not in the bonus yet, I don't know. No, no they've no. been shooting bonus all yeah, the way through yeah. here, so that can't be it. So Dexter checks out, and who comes back? Oh, oh I 20, 22. Andrew BJ. Boster and Fisher are yeah. in. Nick Iams and Andy Ryan play for the Maroons. As Ryan has it, goes to the right side, dotted line, lays it off. To Whitaker, it goes off his fingertips out of bounds. It belongs to the Cavaliers with just 41.9 seconds to go. The Maroons will have a happy bus trip back to Moline, and they will reload to come back on Friday night in a rematch with the Silver Streak. Shot up, no good. Battle for the rebound. And somebody for the Cavs picked up the foul. John Morsheiser as we quickly look down to give you a preview of what happened between those two teams earlier in the year. Moline really got its season put together. They went into Galesburg with a three and four record and defeated the Silver Streaks, if I'm not mistaken, were unbeaten at that time. I think you're right. Back. Uh, yep, Moline gave the Silver Streaks their first loss. They'd won six in a row, 53 to 43. Free throw up and no good. One more by Ryan. No, make that. Oops. Who's shooting? Nick Iams. Iams second free throw, and that's no good. Battle for the rebound. Comes off. It's saved. It belongs to the Cavaliers. In the second meeting at Wharton Fieldhouse, another great basketball game. As the Maroons won 74 to 71. Shot up, no good by the Cavs. So it should be quite a battle be a right here on Friday night. I surely hope. Everybody who can get a ticket for Moline gets here because you'll be truly entertained. This is a fun basketball team to watch. The Cavaliers have it into the front court with just five seconds to go. Shot from the dead corner off the back iron. No good. Ball's loose. The Maroons have it and the victory. 75 to 47 as Frank Dexter's team goes to 22 and 6. And they will play the Galesburg Silver Streaks right here on Friday night. Jim and I will be right back with our post-game show after this timeout. That was hard to...